thank you all very much. I'm going to go ahead and start now. Um, when it comes to energy and natural gas in particular, we're living in a rapidly evolving world. Back in the early to mid 2000s, U.S. natural gas consumption outpaced our production. Our country was in the midst of building terminals to import natural gas in the form of liquefied natural gas, or LNG. Fast forward to 2017, and the U.S. is now the world's largest natural gas producer, and those very same terminals are being converted to export LNG. Given this significant change, today I'm here to talk to you about the journey natural gas takes, from being produced at the well to being exported as LNG, and specifically how the Office of Fossil Energy plays a major role within that process. Of course. There we go. All right. The illustration here provides you with a view of where these resources would likely occur. In the past and up until roughly the early 2000s, natural gas production typically came from the natural pressures of drilling and pumping operations. Here circled in blue, you can see where these resources would likely be located. Since that time frame, innovations in the drilling technique of horizontal drilling with hydraulic fracturing has substantially increased gas production. Producers are now able to access natural gas from areas such as shale plays and tight sand formations, which I've circled here in red, in a much more economic fashion. Now, this production innovation is frequently referred to as a game changer, given the fact that it's enabled the United States to gain access to a much larger portion of its natural gas resources. More broadly, though, it is changing our energy landscape and having huge implications, not only on our economy, but also our global presence. In order to gain an understanding of just the extent of the situation, you can see here from a chart produced by EIA the fundamental shift in the location of U.S. natural gas production. The natural gas being produced in the early 2000s is substantially different than what it is that we see today. The chart here also provides a great illustration of how, without horizontal drilling with hydraulic fracturing, U.S. natural gas production would likely level off and diminish based on our projections. An important thing to keep in mind here is it's not as though these resources have somehow increased but rather it's our ability to get at them in a much more economically efficient manner that has substantially changed. Overall, we expect this trend to evolve even more so over the next 20 plus years. So I'm sure you're wondering where exactly is this natural gas production coming from? Well, some of the places you've likely heard of are the Barnett, Eagle Ford, and Haynesville shale plays, which I've circled here in orange, which are located in Texas and Louisiana. You've probably also heard of the Utica and Marcella shale plays, which I've circled here in, in red, which are predominantly located in Pennsylvania, West Virginia, and Ohio. Now, perhaps the single most important factor outside of having these resources is actually getting them to market. What matters here is having access to natural gas pipelines. What you can see here is that very same map I just showed you, but with a whole lot more information. Well, all of those black lines you see running across the map, they illustrate the vast natural gas pipeline network here in the United States. The resources, or you will notice that the network is most dense around the resources, but it also stretches to all corners of the United States. So I mentioned earlier that the U.S. historically relied on a degree of natural gas imports in order to satisfy its domestic needs. However, with the recent production boom, we now potentially have the resources to satisfy those very same domestic needs. As the graph indicates, you can see a significant change beginning just before 2010 with a, with a significant increase in production. Essentially, the United States has doubled its natural gas production capacity. What you can also see is that our production now outpaces our consumption. The resulting effect is that starting this year, the U.S. will officially become a net exporter of natural gas. Now, what's important to recognize as well is that the decision to export natural gas doesn't happen without careful consideration. 
The U.S. federal government plays a very active role not only in helping to support but also to oversee this export market. By law, a company or individual can't export natural gas without first having the authority to do so from the Office of Fossil Energy. That authority derives from the Natural Gas Act of 1938. Overall, the authorizations are broken down into two categories based on, based on international free trade agreements. The first of those categories are for exports to those countries in which the United States has a free trade agreement with. A good example of these countries, or one of these, or several of these countries, excuse me, are Australia, Mexico, South Korea, Singapore, and Canada. Now, the second category are for exports going to non-free trade agreement countries. In these particular instances, DOE is required to conduct a public interest review. So you've heard me refer to a public interest review on several occasions now, and I'm sure you're wondering, what the heck is included here? Well, this list breaks down those various factors. Overall, the Office of Fossil Energy evaluates issues such as an export's economic and environmental impacts in order to make a qualified decision. The office also conducts its own, uh, conducts and utilizes, excuse me, its own studies in a broad range of different topics, including the economic impacts on domestic natural gas markets, as well as the environmental impacts associated with unconventional production. It's important to keep in mind that these decisions aren't necessarily made in a vacuum. A great example of this decision-making process is with the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission and permitting of large-scale LNG export terminals. Essentially, FERC permits the siting, construction, and operation of a particular facility. During the environmental review of that particular topic, or the particular project, DOE acts as a cooperating agency along with several other federal and state agencies. This process allows the agencies to inform FERC in their decision-making process for a particular project's permit. During the, uh, DOE then utilizes FERC's analysis and authorization within its own evaluation of whether or not these LNG exports should occur for a particular project. As I mentioned in the prior slide, DOE is a part of a much larger permitting structure. This diagram illustrates the sheer complexities and interconnected nature of that federal oversight structure. Specifically, you'll notice that DOE's role in a couple of places, which I've circled here in blue. The key takeaway I hope that you the key thing I hope you take away from this diagram is the sheer complexity, in, uh, complexity of the oversight among the separate federal agencies. It's important to realize, though, that each agency also understands these complexities. Many of the agencies you see here are a part of an informal working group that that's, meets to stay abreast to the ongoing policy and regulatory issues. Some of those federal agencies include FERC, FIMSA, U.S. Coast Guard, MARAD, FRA, and BSEE. So I'm sure you're wondering, where exactly are these facilities located? Well, as it turns out, the majority of them are located along the Gulf Coast. You'll also notice that there are two additional large-scale facilities located just outside of Savannah, Georgia, as well as Ludsby, Maryland. Additionally, you'll notice a third cluster located along the Atlantic coast of Florida. These are small-scale facilities that are authorized to export LNG and compressed natural gas on container cargo vessels. So far, we have one large-scale terminal and one small-scale facility that are currently exporting LNG. The two projects are the Sabine Pass Export Terminal and the American LNG Export Facility. To be clear, this situation is having significant effects on the global LNG trade market. Shipments that were previously destined for the U.S. have been reallocated to other parts of the world in order to meet market demands. Customers can now import LNG from the United States, thus creating a space for our country to become a key global LNG supplier. So I'm sure you're wondering, where exactly are these U.S. LNG cargos going to? Well, as it turns out, each of the countries you see here, shaded in blue, represents a recipient of U.S. LNG. So far, Mexico, 
Chile, Japan, South Korea, and China are all top recipients of US LNG cargoes. As part of each authorization, companies and individuals have to report directly to the Office of Fossil Energy the destination volume price, among other things, in order for us to keep track of them related to their authorization. The office then analyzes and publishes this information in monthly and quarterly reports, which are available on our website. So finally, I'm sure you're wondering, what do we expect the future hold for US LNG exports? Well, based on current global LNG imports, Japan and South Korea are currently the two largest importers of LNG. Their demand, however, is fluctuated from 2007 through 2015. But overall, you can see global LNG demand steadily increased since 2007. When you compare this global demand versus the total LNG export capacity to non-free trade agreement countries that DOE is authorized, you can see that there's quite a bit of supply that's available globally. Now, what's critical here is to recognize that of that export authorization capacity, less than half is currently under construction. Moreover, though, what's important to recognize is that currently the U.S. is, only, is exporting less than 10% of that current authorized volume. So the next obvious question is, what does that mean for the overall LNG uh, global market? Well, that's a question I'm going to leave to the expert forecasters and DOE analysts to answer. That's all I have. I hope you've enjoyed hearing about the journey natural gas takes moving from the well to LNG export. If you have any other questions or you're interested to know more about our program, please feel free to visit our website or send me an email. Thank you.